are visual. Some people are kinesthetic. Some people are auditory. You'll see them express themselves in different ways. They'll say, look at this, or listen to this, or see this, or watch this, or, or read my lips. And that's showing you how different their mind processes. I really impact most powerfully people who are very, very uh, auditory and very visual and graphic. Some people who are real linear have trouble calibrating for me. I got to work harder to try to appreciate how you see life or you see life, but unless I appreciate it, unless I understand it, unless I empathize with it, I can't basically ratchet up or down to enough lowest common denominator to build a bridge of trust where I can counsel you. And I can't do that if I'm not interested enough to extend myself. Does that make sense? Does what I say so far really work with you? Okay. I want to show you some things here. These are actual checks that Paul sent out to one, is it, is this, you, sent these, you sent these out to the client. I did it wrong? That's correct. Don't I did, yeah, okay. Can you guys see it? One's 15,000, one's 11,000, one's 15,000, one's 24, eight, almost 25,000. I'll bring it down. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what. You know, next, next time you got to take um, some sprinting lessons, Bob. There's another set, 27,000, almost 27 and a half, 25, 4, uh, 19,000, 17,000. These are just a couple of months. These are actual figures of what you paid out to the client. And it's really neat because it demonstrates two things. We've helped Paul. Paul has been a, has been a, a follower of my methodology for a long time, and he's applied it. It took him a long time on his own, but he got six strategic alliances. These are showing over the years what he's paid out to his, and you can see the good news. When did we start with you, Paul? So you can see that in, in August, in, in August you can start seeing how the figures went up that he was paying out because we made, the, we, we gave him better devices, vehicles, and strategies for using the relationships he already had in place. But he paid out, he paid out $208,000 in that uh, 12 month period of which about six of it we helped him with. That's not the point. The point is that strategic alliance, he paid out 200,000, what'd you make on it? About a million one. About a million one. Incremental, additional profit, right? Yeah, so then there's no cost. And these clients had to do nothing except for just agree to the transaction. They got 200 grand, he got a million one. Six strategic alliances, okay. We're gonna talk strategic alliances until we drop. It's gonna be specific stuff. Now, we did a program, a couple of you actually were at it. It was a pilot program that I did. I took the best slides from it. I'm gonna go through it. Some of them are not gonna be relevant, so I'll skip through them a lot, but hopefully. Okay, all right, we're gonna talk serious stuff about strategic alliances, joint ventures, host beneficiaries. So, okay, an overview. We're gonna talk about strategic alliances, your strategic objectives, strategic alliance inventory and opportunity audit, converting all this from theory to application, which is why you're here. So let's get started. First of all, the, the title of this was a seminar I did called Partner or Perish. It was inspired by an article that was the lead article in Forbes magazine about six, seven months ago. It said, that basically as expensive as it is to buy new market shares, to create new products, to penetrate new industries, parts of the world, niches, the logical, strategic, proven alternative that Fortune 500 and Global 2000 companies have already recognized are organizing powerful and profitable strategic alliances. And 40% of them had major initiatives that they believed that more and more of their business was going to emanate from them with more leverage and more incremental profitability than anything else they did. Because today you got brutal competition doing it yourself. You got a disloyal market going out in the open market and having to spend all the time, the money, effort to get credibility and to win people over from other uh, suppliers. 
or from other alternatives if you're a new uh, technological or innovative solution. You got the commoditization of products and services, so you got to work against trying to be distinctive. You got multiple options and alternatives to fill a given need, not just in your category, but all kinds of other alternatives being created daily, instantly. You've got to be able to block all that, preempt them. You got fear, apprehension, uncertainty people have about doing business with anybody, switching suppliers, going with the new kid on town. I've got a client I'm going to go visit. Uh, the day after this ends in Tulsa, and it's a brilliant strategy for web enabling oil and gas um, um, wells, storage tanks, pipelines, all kinds of things, compressors, but people are apprehensive about switching. They're terrified about switching. There are few trusted advisors out there that the market can really depend on or believe in. What is a strategic alliance? Well, it's nothing more than the old-fashioned partnering with a strategic twist. Now that you know strategy, because Chet, Chet, Chet taught you, right? Right? Yes? OK. It's a means to dramatically expand and enhance your ability to generate more new markets, business, clients, customers, for those of you who think that way, image, posture, profitability, all with minimal expenditure of time, effort, expense, manpower, and the R word, risk. The opportunities in strategic alliances are as limitless as your nonlinear capacity to see connections and to see all the ways that opportunity can flow in and out of your business. And there are two-way valve. It's only limited to your infiniteness, your ability to look inside and out. Mergers and acquisitions aren't the only way to go. Strategic alliances are nothing more than said old-fashioned party with a twist. But you can see that, that strategic alliances are rising like by an incredible rate, whereas mergers and acquisitions are, are, are well, this, when this chart was done, they're flat. Mergers have slightly increased over five years, while strategic alliances have doubled, and they're, they're estimated to double again and redouble again. 1999 companies with $2 billion in revenue or more formed an average of 138 alliances each, according to Forbes in that article. The number of alliances is growing 20% a year with 10,000 new alliances being reported. These are mainstream. These are big time ones. These are not the powerful and fluid kind that you guys can create, the dynamic ones. But the 20% of the revenue generated from the top 2,000 US and European companies now come from alliances. Now, that's a big piece of change. That's billions or trillions of dollars. Enterprise.com survey, 49% of business reported more worth 20% higher revenues and 30% increased productivity because of 90% of the corporate executive survey felt a strategic alliance or joint venture with another company was absolutely, those you can't read, A-B-S-O-L-U-T-E-L-Y, absolutely essential to maintain a competitive edge. Strategic alliances can be a partnership in which you combine efforts in anything from getting a better price or goods by buying in bulk together to seeking business together with each company providing part of the package to using the brand, the benefit, the distribution channel, and anything in between. Alliance represent an essential strategy for achieving top line growth, higher profitability, enhanced business franchise. It gives you greater preemptiveness, which is what you are after in a world trying to turn you into a marginalized commodity. Numerous benefits for everyone involved, obvious. Here's nine major benefits. Achieve advantages of scale, scope, or speed. You can tie into other people. You can tap into hundreds of millions, millions of dollars for the small ones, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars worth of assets, personnel, development, research, systems, distribution, for nothing more than sweat equity or a little minor amount of funding of mailings or trips or, or brochures. You can do things instantly because it's already been done. Somebody else took. 20 years to build an organization, or 200 years, you can walk behind it and do it in 20 weeks. You can ride through it. You can leverage up for it. Increase market penetration. By, by attaching your horse or your, your um, cart to a lot or to a single other company star, you can penetrate markets that you never in a million years could have gotten even the door cracked open a little bit for. And you can be invited into the inner sanctum when you do it right. You can enhance your competitiveness in local, national, or international markets 
by instantly preempting everybody else, going right to the top through the best relationships out there, the best companies, the best influences, the best publications, the best associations. You can enhance product development because you can take advantage of all kinds of other products that can be parallel applied to yours, or you can let all the resources of bigger companies or of different companies be used for you. You can develop new business opportunities through new products and services. You can take your products through other companies, you can take their products through yours. You can combine together and create a whole new hybrid. You can penetrate new markets, applications, expand market development. You have a research department that is 100 times better than your whole staff with no fixed cost. Think about that. You can diversify, which gives you hedges. You'll see tomorrow when I do my, my geographic, I mean my Parthenon of geometric business growth, the possibilities therein. You can create new businesses, entirely new businesses that can be spun off, that can be worth more or generate more or or um, provide more certainty, more profitability, more cash flow, more access, more beginner or high level buyers, clients than the, the main business you run right now. You can reduce costs dramatically by not having to have your own sales force or not having to have your own production department or not having to have your own, your own distribution centers or not having to have your own service people or not having to have your own advertising or not having to pay for the cost of booths at trade shows. You have 43 additional success factors, which I will go through because we were going to break this apart. And my, my apart breaker, Chet, who knows how to do this, didn't do it. My fault, but his, his responsibility. We'll yell at him when he comes by. Number one, easily established. Much easier than starting a new business. Number two, augment your existing selling effort. Number three, increase sales and profitability. Number four, lower the barrier of entry, meaning the barrier of entry for you into a market or into a niche. Number five, enhance your image, your stature, your posture. Number seven, expand vastly your client base. Se seven, boost market, market, supposed to be market presence, market presence, typo. Number eight, provide added value to your clients by bringing other people's products or services through to you or, or reversing it and helping provide added value to your partner's clients. Nine, contributing substantially to perceive, it should be client benefits, that was not my slide. Number 10, enter emerging markets. Number 11, expand your horizons. Possibility based, the three Ps. Uh, passion, purpose, possibility. Without those three Ps, you're never gonna achieve greatness. Without the last P, you're only gonna be limited. Possibility, expand your horizons. 12, speed access to a wide variety of new markets. 13, expand beyond geographic boundaries. Think about it, you can be all over the world, all over the country. Anywhere you can't normally be right now for time, for effort, for access, for familiarity. Anywhere here, anywhere in Canada, anywhere in North America, anywhere on this continent, anywhere in South America, anywhere, anywhere around the globe. 14, gain a foothold in international marketplace. 15, control other people's markets. 16, gain competitive advantage. 17, rapidly overpower the competition. 18, joint marketing to share costs and personnel. 19, joint selling or distribution. 20, design collaboration to create, design, package, repurpose. 21, quicker to create form. 22, more flexible to operate. 23, less risky. 24, requires far less cash. 25, technological licenses. 26, research and development purposes. 27, enhanced research and development capabilities. 28, access knowledge and expertise, expertise beyond your company's borders. All kinds of expertise you couldn't own or afford even on a consulting basis or a subcontract in a million years you can plug into for free. Do you understand that? 29, strengthen your reputation in industry as a result of the association. 30, extend product offerings. 31, Widen your scope of innovation. 32, establish unique position in the market. 33, secure position as front runner in the marketplace. 34, provide marketing and selling. Or get it, either way, it's a two-way valve. You can do things internally, you can do things externally. 35, easily establish purchasing supply relationships. 36, set up instant distribution networks. 36, there's two 36s, 36A, 36B. <laughs> Capitalize on hidden assets. Everyone's got hidden assets, overlooked opportunities, underperforming activities undervalued relationships, underutilized distribution channels. 
37 and higher ROIs and ROEs on alliances than from your core or main business. 38, difficult for your competitors to imitate or emulate. It's preemptible. You can basically block out the competition. 39, remain focused on your core opportunity. You can have one or two people project manage the relationships. You can spend the rest of your time on the 40 or 50 or 100 people in your main business. That one person can be the biggest, most lucrative profit center in the world. Wouldn't you like to have five more six, six deal um, um, JVs like you got, Paul? Be worth more than the whole business was making, wouldn't it? Where was I? 40, outsourcing non-core competencies. You can get rid of all the things you don't do well. And John Dudak was here. He would tell you he's a, an effectiveness coach. And he's got uh, a real, oh, is he there? Where are you? Oh, you didn't see you. What, what are the, what are your, 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 big, your big secret is, to get, is not to do what you don't do great, isn't it? Well, I mean, John, I'm not going to do him justice, but I'm going to give you my, my biggest impact when I met John. He said, figure out the three most important things your company pays you to do. Figure out the six or seven critical processes in doing it. Value rank your performance in each one of those processes. And he's got a better formula than that, but from imbecilic to great, that's not the phrases you used, but you had a scale, didn't you? And he said, if you're not good to great, don't do it. Get somebody else to do it. Because if you go, the, the, the leverage in going from imbecilic to lousy is nothing. The leverage going from good to great is geometric, isn't it, John? The phrase we use, Jay, as you might remember, is uh, based on a, a real simple observation. And that is that, especially in this country, we, spend, we wind up spending an entire lifetime working on our weaknesses for various reasons. Got to make our weaknesses better. We become very aware of them. And people make us very aware of them in all kinds of ways. It's a very negative world out there in many respects. But at the end of a lifetime, by following that formula, all you get are a lot of really strong weaknesses. That's a great insight. And unfortunately, that's not enough to make you great or to make your organization great in today's world. So if you really want to be great, realize that you have two or three areas of distinct competency, tremendous strengths, possible giftedness. Focus on that and then figure out a way to delegate, systematically delegate or outsource, your weaknesses. Or you outsource. Bet. Yeah. But don't burden yourself with it because it's a waste. It's Get actually, rid of it. you got a moral responsibility to the betterment of your corporation, don't you? You bet, Jay. Good. John's got a plethora or a plethora of things like that. Thank you, John. I didn't know you were in the room. Um, let you maximize, stretch your management and technical operational resources. 42, reduce overhead through shared cost outsourcing. 43, manufacture, fulfill cost effectively. OK, some corporate successes, just a few. Uh, I mean, think about it. All state wouldn't be possible uh, if Sears hadn't let them basically have, have a little kiosk in all the Sears stores, right? Amex makes so much money by having the inserts in all their mailers. Uh, University Clothes and Macy's was a joint venture boutique that they created. The old Bernard Baruch story. Do you remember that story with people, the, the person who wanted to borrow money from Bernard Baruch? He wanted to borrow like $30,000. And you all know who Bernard, Bernard Baruch was? Famous financier. They, well, let's say Rockefeller, same story. You all know who Rockefeller was? Wealthy guy. Pub, person wants to buy, wants to borrow $30,000 for Rockefeller. He said, I won't lend you the $30,000, $30, but I'll do something 100 times better. I'll walk back and forth two times on the, on the stock market floor with my arm around you, which is implied endorsement. And everyone will, you can borrow all the money you want. And you got to understand the power of relationships. Liquid Audio, this is an internet company, I think, that had all these alliances. Types of alliances, these are a few. Joint ventures, co-branding, host beneficiary, equity partnerships, endorsements, flip business opportunities where you tie up a deal and you flip it and sell it to somebody else, acquiring assets, tangible or intangible, acquiring distribution networks, acquiring leads from people who don't know how to convert them, uh, or, or, or their actual, they can be leads in the form of buyers of theirs that have no other use for those people but have an incredible use by being logical prospects for you. Licensing or acquiring license. I had about four clients, one made uh, $2 million licensing a process he had for kiln drying wood in a lumber mill to 200 other lumber mills. One of them licensed a process for, for uh, helping dry cleaners um, 
uh, market and advertising is better to all kinds of dry cleaners. One of them basically did a process for helping car washes get double the number of people to up, upgrade to the uh, hot wax. Those are just a few of the ideas. I've had people license their method for listing real estate. I've had people license their method for inventory control. I've had people joint venture with people on reducing their, uh, on auditing their payables and utilities because they knew how to do it better than operating businesses and sharing the revenue or get a percentage for using their software. Uh, core competency consulting. You may do something so well that you can counsel people and make more money uh, just counseling than you ever do. We had a couple of people from who were top performers for Remax. One guy sold 800 homes in a year, and he regularly would take two days uh, a week and let other agents pay him $8,000 a piece just to ride around with him. And he'd have 10 people sometimes riding around with him in a bus, paying him $8,000 for the privilege of learning what he did. Um, uh, reclamation. You can have done something brilliantly that you have no other use for, but it can be massively useful to other people. Ads, promotions, methodology, technology, sales approaches, um, or it can be used in all kinds of non-competitive areas within your industry and outside of it. Uh, sales forces. Somebody may have a great sales force and you don't. Or you may have a great sales force but they're not being fully utilized. New products or markets. E-business. Joint ventures co-branding. Joint venture allows the best of all possibilities. You can easily repackage or create new businesses together with each company providing part of the package. A uh, great example. I talked about mini markets, McDonald's. Uh, you, you drive down now, there's McDonald's, pizza, et cetera. Banks now in groceries, right? Logical, it works because they're taking parasitical but benevolent advantage of somebody else's traffic, volume, flow, location, goodwill, brand. Co-branding allows two companies to come together to use brands to put behind the products. Coke and Procter & Gamble create a spin-off to market non-carbonated drinks uh, and Pringles products. P&G gets access to Coke's 16,000 markets. They both share in the profits. A few other ones. Uh, Taco Bell used, did a bunch of joint ventures with Amazon recently. Um, uh, leverage assets, not yours, accounting practice broker. I don't know what these all are. I'm skipping. Well, I, I knew when I created them. I don't remember. And I don't want to go. I don't want to take time and be slow on it right now. Uh, equity partnership. You can get equity in the deal. You can have joint equity in the client and all the revenue that emanates from the client. You can have joint equity in the brand. You can have joint equity in the distribution channel you create. You can have joint equity in the buyers and prospects that result from it. You can have joint equity in the marketing material. You can have joint equity in the process and intellectual property. Anything in between. I'm just trying to sp expand your imagination. Endorsements. Um, well, I've generated for myself nearly $100 million worth of revenue, screwing around by going to other people that already had spent hundreds of millions of dollars building goodwill, like Nightingale Conant, Success Magazine, um, uh, Agora that had about seven newsletters, Phillips that had about 20 newsletters, uh, Tony Robbins, a bunch of industry experts, a uh, bunch of associations who endorsed me to their list and generated all kinds of business. Um, um, I don't know what William Simon's home is. ARP, Colonial Pen, ARP was built by Colonial Pen. Colonial Pen is an insurance company. 20, 30 years ago, they, said they decided to specialize in affinity marketing, meaning they would end up finding groups, associations that had large affinity groups they could write big policies for. The only problem was they had no clients. So they decided, they went out and tried to knock on a lot of doors and it was a difficult market that other people had. So they thought, screw that. We'll create our own. We'll go out and we'll create an organization. They created AARP, American Association of Retired People. They funded the promotion of it, the building of it. They got it up and then they became the recommended provider and they got billions of dollars of insurance from it. Um, a client of mine was an advertising agency for nonprofit associations. Every time they would build an association up, they'd get fired because they were earning too much money because they were variably compensated. They thought, screw that stuff. So they started a, um, an association called the National Taxpayers Union and became their agency and they made millions and millions of dollars off of the agency services. Um, John Ritter was used, there used to be an infomercial called Where There's a Will, There's an A. You ever remember that? They had the regular program with, a no, with an unnamed, non-recognized host and it did X. They paid John Ritter to endorse it and do a joint venture with them and it produced triple the result. They subsequently got Michael Landon, before he died, 
to do it, and it tripled again the result. Uh, Agora one time got Tom Bosley from Happy Days to endorse a business publication and an improved yield 25%. They had to pay him a nominal amount per transaction. Tony Robbins got his start on TV when Fran Targeton was popular because he was on That's Incredible. And he'd just gotten, uh, he, would named, he was named to the Hall of Fame. And he was, was this prominent um, sports figure. And he endorsed Tony on TV and it built Tony. Schools have the kids do magazine subscriptions and everybody buys them. I'm giving you the whole scope. Reinventing business opportunities. Okay, you can do all kinds of joint ventures. You can create brands, actual new products together, new services with people, proprietary products. You can build and combine lists that you can rent or use for targeting. You can do research together. You can build mastermind brain trust that the byproduct shares in the revenue. You can build advisory groups that way. Um, you, can, you can collaborate on financing of promotions, sales forces, ads, markets that you want to penetrate. You can say, hey, we're going to fund together. We want to go after this market. We don't have the wherewithal. You fund it, and we'll give you half of the profit forever or until you get 10 times return on your investment or anything in between. You can use it to acquire distressed properties, jobs. One time we had a client, and uh, oh no, we were, we were negotiating with a client. Before we closed the deal, the client's uh, finances got bad, and it was like a $50 million company in the um, computer services business, and they had to close the doors. And before they released all the sales force, I said, you guys are crazy. Why don't you take your best salespeople, package them up, and joint venture, make them available to somebody else who's in your business and take a share of the revenue by just passing them out instead of letting them go out in the market for themselves. The revenue difference in that attitude shift was millions of dollars. Um, space, you can joint venture un unsold space in advertising, in publications with, with magazines, production. You can joint venture. Somebody may have a full-time first shift but not be doing anything after that. Incrementally, you can joint venture the second shift, pay the incremental hard costs, which are nothing, but, get, but give, them, give the owner of the property, the equipment, everything, a share of the profits. I'm just going to give you a couple of things. Talent, distribution, delivery, capacity, facilities, technology. Um, um, I don't know what we meant by that. I think it was somebody that we were, um, we were doing who had a very sophisticated telemarketing force and room and technology that we were access to just on a variable basis because he believed in what we were doing and he became our entire back room on a project. Processes, procedures, intellectual capital. You can acquire. You can acquire sales forces from other people. Retail stores, kiosks, signage, leases, licenses, display space and windows, inserts. We have one guy that made it a joint venture with a with a, a company. He had all these offices at ground level, but he was only but one whole side of him he wasn't using for anything, and he leased out on a joint venture that took a share of the increased revenue, the signage to put signs, the window to put signs for a retail company. And it worked great. Inserts, it's like newsletter inserts, statement stuffer inserts, polywrap. You go to a publication, you go to, to um, an association, you let them put a polywrapped uh, bag around it, you put your promotion in on top, you pay the hard cost and a percentage of the yield, and you can end up getting preeminent access to their audience. Bind-ins, blow-ins, those are things you put in magazines. You can acquire assets, leases, purchase, options, acquire leads. I, I, I made a million dollars when I was doing my seminar by going to a company who was selling similar but different uh, training programs and getting them to let me buy on a percentage basis, on a joint venture, all their unconverted leads and switch them into my product. Uh, prospects, inactive clients. A lot of people never try to reactivate their clients. If you go to them and say, let me have your, un your old clients, I'll give you... 25%, 15%, 10% of the profit or the, or the business or a flat rate for everyone that activates, you can make a fortune. License or acquiring licenses. You can acquire or render, you can acquire or render. it's a two-way valve. Licenses for marketing materials or technology, sales appeal, uh, uh, abilities or people, management abilities or staff, cash flow generating techniques, production enhancement, organizational improving, performance enhancement, information technology, Advisory board, you can put an advisory board together. We've done it dozens of times. 
Get a bunch of prestigious or knowledgeable or expert people, put them on an advisory board, pay them a nominal interim honorarium against a prestigious.